Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we are back in War Thunder looking at the TB3M1732. Now this was another premium plane that was given out as a gift by Gaijin over Christmas and New Year's. It's a tier 1 Russian bomber and to be honest it's quite fun to use. Like it's pretty decent, it has some flaws and I will be going through them in this video. So it's armaments wise, it has three turrets on the plane, on the top, which but which all have two 7.62mm machine guns, and they all can fire at the same time. If you look on the screen, they have 360s where they can turn around and fire, which is absolutely brilliant if anything attacks you from above. It also has two turrets mounted on the underbelly of the wings, which is quite weird, and they each have a 7.62mm machine gun. So if anything comes from behind you, or below you, they can fire. And looking at the bomb loads, it has three types. You can either have 24 100 kilo bombs, 12 250 kilo bombs, or four 500 kilo bombs and four 250 kilo. Now, I use the four 500 kilo and the four 250 because that gives you a total damage of 3,000 kilos, which is completely insane at tier 1. It's absolutely brilliant. I mean, this plane is just... It's full of guns. It's full of bombs. It's... You know, it's fun to fly. But the only problem with it is, is that it is slow. It is one of the slowest planes in this game. I thought the H6K was slow. And then I was given this. This thing caps out at a max speed of 190 kilometers an hour. Yeah, 190. Most planes use that to land. <laughs> the turn time is 56 seconds. Now, comparing that to the XF5F, which I uh, reviewed either today or yesterday, that was 18 seconds. This thing in realistic mode, in full real battles, will take you 56 seconds just to turn. It's completely ridiculous, and the rate of climb is 8.5 meters per second. Ugh, not very fun. Not, not very fun. And the thing is, you are absolutely huge. This plane is massive. It's nearly as big as a flying fortress. It might even be the same size. It has the same amount of engines, probably the same wingspan. So yeah, it's probably the same size but it's slow as hell, so you're really going to struggle against enemy artillery sometimes where they decide to be accurate every so often. You're also going to struggle when planes decide to come up to your level to come after you. Luckily, it is a tier 1 plane, so that actually doesn't happen that much. At tier 1, people kind of just leave the bombers alone because a lot of bombers dive to gain that speed. And so the fighters can pick them off at low altitude, so in this... Stay high, stay above everybody, and just bomb, and bomb, and bomb. Because no matter what bomb load you choose, you're going to have a ton of bombs in this thing, with a lot of versatility. Like right now, I'm going after these targets, basically because I've only just reached them. I'm about three, four minutes into the game, and I've just reached the other side of the map. I've crossed the line, it takes that long to move this thing. <laughs> But once you get it moving, you know, if you want to go into a dive, I'm sure it will pick up a lot of speed. Your maneuverability isn't either an option, so just make sure you level out properly. Otherwise, you will hit the ground like a sack of potatoes. Now, because of this bomb load, because you can carry 3,000 kilos on this, I would recommend, if you have it, to attack the airfields. The only problem with that is it will take you half the match to get to the airfield, so you might as well pick off some vehicles and some AA once you get there, if they haven't already been destroyed by your allies, on the way. Because as you can see in this map, I'm basically shooting at vehicles which my allies haven't killed yet, and a lot of them, because it's a tier 1 match, they are armoured cars and AA, so they can even get destroyed by fighters. So basically, this thing can actually be kind of useless sometimes at Tier 1. And at Tier 2, it suffers even more, because you start getting the BF-109s, you start getting the Typhoons, you start getting the Zeros, you start getting stuff like that, which will climb up to here and tear you to pieces. This thing is made out of paper. It's kind of the same as the Wellington. It basically bags on the idea that it has so much armaments, they didn't even think about 
putting any armor on the plane or anything like that. It was basically like, oh, we can protect ourselves. We don't care that people are coming after us because we will completely shoot them out of the air. Luckily, because this is a tier one plane, nobody comes after you. And if they do, the armament should suffice. And even if they do come after you, just go into a steep dive. You will gain so much speed that they won't be able to combat it. The only problem with that is you have to pull up. And pulling up in this plane is... Well, basically, you have to be Jesus. Uh, let's just say that. So, apart from it being slow, the other problem with its turn time is that you lose all of its speed. And if you turn too much, even 90 degrees, this thing goes down to about 90 kilometers an hour, maybe 100 kilometers an hour, if you are lucky. And that is its critical speed, so it has to put its nose down. And then more problems come about because that means you are halfway through a turn it means that you've lost all your speed and you're basically a dead duck in the water so yeah this plane it's even though the bomb load is great even though it's armed to the teeth it's so slow and you can't control the flaps there are no flaps on this plane you can obviously see it has the wheels out so there's no gear control or anything like that um, the pilots are very exposed in the top, and by that I mean there isn't a cockpit. They are basically open to the elements, and therefore open to other pilots, other fighters coming after you. A good thing is that there's two of them, so if one gets knocked out, it's okay. The gunners are in the same position, where they don't have any casing, they don't have any cover, but they do have each two 7.62mm, so they can do some damage. The two turrets on the bottom of the wings are very hard to hit. Uh, they don't have a huge arc compared to the ones on the top, but they are still decent, and they can still cover your behind. I've only been shot down once in this thing, because most people at this tier don't climb to this level, because you're facing biplanes, you're facing uh, hurricanes, stuff like that, you're facing hawks, and it's very hard to climb to about 3,000 kilom uh, not kilometers, meters, because it takes so long. So staying at this height, you should be fine, until bombers start coming after you. The only time I got shot down in this plane is when an SB basically came up above me, dropped down 90 degrees, straight through my fuselage, and cut me in half, and he was fine. <laughs> Which just shows how weak this plane is, even compared to the SB. Tiering-wise, I think it's at the perfect tier. As I said before, a tier 2, if you get into a tier 2 game... Please do not use this aircraft because you will struggle. People will shoot you down in seconds. The fact that you have four engines, they are big. You can survive on two engines. I have in this thing, and I've actually landed it, which is quite amazing, since the wingspan is basically the width of the airfield. But, as I said, the engines are huge. They will set on fire easily. It's very easy to chew up this plane. Uh, the tail is quite fragile, but the thing is, it has those turrets. Those turrets are going to be your saving grace every time. And the bomb load. The bomb load is brilliant. You can actually get so much research points and so many lines from this just because of the percentages it gets. Because it is a premium plane. At this level, there are not a lot of fighters that can combat this. So your main worry is going to be stuff like the JU-87s, which actually spawn at bomber height. They only have two machine guns though, and it will take them a long time to kill this plane, which is great. Problem areas on this plane, obviously as I said the pilots are very exposed, the turret guys are very exposed, so you want to have very highly upgraded uh, vitality, there we go, vitality on the turret guys, but your main problem is you are basically a sitting duck the whole battle in this plane. And even if you get to the other side of the uh, field to attack the enemy, you won't do that much damage because this thing is so slow. As you can see there, I didn't do a ton of damage because of that. But it's still a fun plane to fly just because of its bomb, bomb load. And if you dive in it, it's quite interesting. <laughs> like, if, if you have this plane, I recommend just diving it from about 3,000... Uh, meters and see the reaction of the enemy fighters because just in chat chat blows up seeing this absolutely whale of a bomber coming down at them and the fact that it has a lot of guns it reminds me a lot of the h6k but this thing 
is less maneuverable and has less speed of the H6K, but it has a better bomb load. So, thank you for watching, and have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.